we're roughly 34 days away from Tears of the Kingdom arriving in front of us. And it's still interesting as I scour the internet and I read the comment sections and I take on the live streams. And, you know, there's some narratives going around about Tears of the Kingdom that I find to be an absolute joke. I find to be embarrassing. And, you know, I think we've sort of hit the point now where we just need to accept as a community that some fans are never going to be happy. Uh, we talked, you know, not too long ago, about a week or so ago, about some developers who were ironically upset at Tears of the Kingdom's gameplay presentation. Again, ironic because they actually thought it was so brilliant it made their own work look bad, right? We did a whole video on that if you want to check that out. We also went over an article that was published at our very popular website uh, talking about how Tears of the Kingdom has ruined the Legend of Zelda franchise. And again, we actually went in-depth even further on that conversation on our podcast this week. We've also seen the consistent narrative that Tears of the Kingdom is just DLC. And that's the narrative that sort of sticks around beyond everything else, with the common arguing points being really threefold. One, Tears of the Kingdom visually does not look really better than Breath of the Wild. I think that's not being fair, but you know what? Let's bite and say that that's true. Uh, that it reuses the same map from Breath of the Wild and other sequels don't do this, which also is not true. We've seen sequels of games in the past reuse the same map, but that's neither here nor there. Again, that is one of the criticisms. And then the chief thing brought up, and maybe the the thing that I believe that IG Aonuma regrets the most, the statements made back when this after this game was announced that the reason this game exists is because they had too many ideas when they were looking at making more DLC for Breath of the Wild. So many ideas, they decided to make a new game. And that's been one of the driving quotes behind everything. Now, before we continue this conversation, hopefully I don't have to remind you much longer, uh, we're on our road to 100,000 subscribers. And if we get there by the time Tears of the Kingdom comes out, we're going to be giving away a special edition Zelda Switch OLED, a collector's edition of the game. We're going to give away one of those collector's pins from PAX East. Also, we have some other giveaways in the works as well. We're going to have two separate giveaway events. I haven't given details on this yet, but because we're close to 100K, I figured I might as well. Uh, for some of the giveaways, it'll just be a standard entry form. So right now, you can't enter. Just subscribe to the channel. The only requirement is that you need to be subscribed in order to enter to win. Uh, but anyways, we'll have a standard entry form, and then we'll also have a live stream celebration event that will have additional giveaways that are only given away live. So we'll have more details on that basically when we hit 100k plans have already been made but you know dates haven't been picked because we don't know when that day is coming now that being said the whole narrative around tears of the kingdom and and i i firmly believe that there are other probably more legitimate concerns to talk about with this game it, it's it's just nintendo sort of did this to themselves I think if IG Aonuma never uttered the words, they had too many ideas for DLC, so that's why they made Tears of the Kingdom. This whole Tears of the Kingdom being DLC narrative wouldn't even exist anymore. And I do think that in the grand scheme, we're talking about a very, very vocal minority on the internet. I haven't seen anyone in real life that is confused about this game or thinks that it's DLC. I also think that the fourth thing that I kind of went unmentioned that adds to this is that the game is 70 bucks, right? So when, when a game goes to 70 and it's Nintendo's first ever retail MSRP $70 game in the modern gaming era, obviously they used to price games like this back in the day. They've priced games even higher. It, it gets really weird because reusing the same map, visually looking the same. Oh my gosh, it's, it has the same running animations and like, Oh, man, this means that it is not a $70 game. It, it's, it's just so weird to me. We know so little about this game. We really do. We, we know so little about this game because of the way Nintendo has chosen to market the game, which, by the way, the way they've chosen to market it seems to be working, and the game is selling incredibly well, and there's some trailers happening during the Mario movie in some territories, but I, I don't understand... I, I don't understand why this narrative keeps coming up because in the end nobody has to buy tears of the kingdom like 
It's okay if you don't think Tears of the Kingdom is worth $70. It's okay if you think it's just $70 DLC. Like, those are okay thoughts and opinions. If those are your thoughts, if those are your opinions, not me, not the hundreds of people down in the comment section, not anyone is going to be able to convince you otherwise because it is a subjective personal take. Now, for some of you, you just want it to be bad. You want Zelda to go back to the way it was. You want this game to tank. Uh, or for others of you, you're just haters, right? You pretty much never have anything positive to say about Nintendo. Anyways, you probably constantly make fan, uh, make fun of Switch and Switch fans. And for others that they do, are they actually are fans of Zelda and are fans of Nintendo, and they, they feel that this is legit concerns, for them, there's nothing we can present to them that's going to make them change their minds other than the game itself. The game will have to change their minds, not us. But it's a narrative that keeps popping up. I see it in the comment section of every video. I see it in the comments on most of my live streams. I see it on Twitter and Facebook and Reddit. And guys, I think it's time as Zelda fans, and this includes myself, uh, as Tears of the Kingdom fans, that we just accept that not every game's for every person, and it's impossible for Tears of the Kingdom to please everyone. Look, I think Tears of the Kingdom is about to be the best game ever made. Uh, I, I don't know this for sure. I haven't played it. My opinion might change drastically once I do. Maybe I don't enjoy it as much as Breath of the Wild, which is my current favorite game of all time. Maybe Tears of the Kingdom falls on its face, and these new mechanics are much to do about nothing. They're not as exciting as we hope they will be. They, there isn't enough changes, and it does kind of just feel like a Breath of the Wild 1.5. And that's fine. If that's what happens, we'll, we'll deal with that when the time comes. But for now, I'm incredibly excited. I know many of you are incredibly excited. And I think it's time we block out the noise. Uh, this just happened with the Mario movie, by the way, right? The Mario movie came out. It has an incredible 90-plus audience score. But yet, before any of us saw the movie and the critics saw it, it had a pretty bad critic score. And because of that, there was this negative sentiment flying around about the Mario movie. Now, thankfully, many of us have gone to the movie. The audience score is showing that. And because of that, the audience is proving, hey, we actually kind of like this thing. In fact, we kind of like this movie a lot. And so the narrative around the Mario movie is slowly shifting away from the negative pre-release reviews and more to the positive audience reviews. And honestly, this is what we have to look to with Tears of the Kingdom. A lot of the folks parroting these negative viewpoints are just trying to hurt Nintendo and hurt this particular game. And I think after the game comes out, the positive reaction to it is going to drown it out so much that none of us even know it exists. So, in the end, I want to know your guys' thoughts on this whole mess of criticism that, that seems to be getting pandered by... Probably the vocal minority, but they're a pretty vocal minority. Uh, and what you think about all of the nonsense around uh, this game. Again, it, it's perfectly fine to be critical. It's perfectly fine to not be excited by Tears of the Kingdom and have your criticisms. I'm not saying that you can't, but I do think once the game comes out, the audience will speak for itself. We're going to see massively positive takes. And for the most part, people are going to love it. And, and, and maybe I'm wrong, but I have enough faith in the Zelda team who has rarely let me down, that they're not going to mess it up this time. In fact, I'm almost more excited because they spent so many of the years with Breath of the Wild just making all the systems work that now they could take a bunch of vast ideas they have to use with those systems and get them implemented. The vast ideas with story and put them into this world. So I think this game is going to be grandiose. I think it's going to be amazing. It's twice the size file, more than twice the size file wise of the original Breath of the Wild, and uh, I, I think we have one of the grandest adventures ever coming up. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Ruffeljans from Nintendo Prime. I'll catch you guys tomorrow in our next video, and uh, I hope you guys have a great start to your weekends.